Welcome to our 3D printing lab in the School of Engineering at UBC Okanagan, where our first year engineering students they experience first-hand involvement in a real engineering project. Uh, allow me to give you a little bit of background on the concept of 3D printing first. Uh, the concept has been around the world for the last 30 years. However, it was only four years ago, a company named Z Corporation, they brought the first commercialized 3D printer. Uh, there are several types of 3D printing techniques. Uh, the most common ones um, is called SLS, which is Selective Laser Sintering. Uh, is based on uh, the bonding of small particles, mostly metallic, using laser and creating uh, a surface melting, bonding these particles together, and at the end you will have a 3D object. The second technique is called FDM, stand for uh, fusion, deposition, modeling and manufacturing, the one that we have in this lab. Uh, a semi-solid material passes through a nozzle by the motion of XYZ. Uh, the jet uh, works on X and Y and the platform uh, travels on Z coordinates and then they create the object. And finally, uh, stereolithography is another technique in which the medium is uh, ultra violet uh, sensitive liquid uh, and then it would be a beam of ultraviolet passes through and create curing of the medium at certain areas causing the solidification of uh, the material and eventually the, the object would be formed. Let's just be a little more specific about the, the facilities that we have here. So we have five units of it's called Cube X Trio. Uh, these are in a sense, the top of the line uh, in their own category. Uh, we obtained them last year. And by the way, I have to uh, make this kind of statement. I'm, I'm very proud that we introduced the use of 3D printing uh, to our first year, first term engineering students. I think we are one of the very handful number of institutes in North America. We right, asked them right from the beginning how to get involved in a real design uh, project this year I asked my students to try to come up with a, a device, apparatus that helps elderly people with day-to-day -day, uh, tasks that they do. And this is the uh, concept of the, uh, this year project. 3D printing has revolutionized manufacturing in the same way that internet revolutionized human communication in the early 90s. Uh, I envision perhaps in 20 years or even earlier, if you need to buy a part for your vehicle, instead of going to the dealer or the manufacturer, you can go to their website and download the file, take the file to somewhere uh, like a staple in 20 years with 3D printing facilities, you can print your part right in front of your eyes, it's such a tangible uh, process. But of course, you have to think about uh, if that happens, which is very convenient for the end user, there would be a sea of people uh, starting from manufacturing to distribution to sales they would lose their job and itself it would revolutionize manufacturing as well uh, that's why i believe retraining would be very crucial for the next two decades i would like to show you a few examples that last year students actually come up with uh, as their design project this is a, an interesting one so this is a, an extension bar and you have seen those that are all aligned and use it for different purposes but often because uh, your uh, plug going to different direction so you got a tangle so something like this which actually rotates helps that you can uh, go to different direction without getting tangled so a very interesting concept and again first year students never had any uh, background in drawing they start to do uh, a modeling uh, in a soft uh, very called SolidWorks that's the standard practice in engineering world software. It's a drawing, modeling, and simulation all in one package. And then, of course, uh, they make a binary file out of it and they transfer it to another software which is uh, coming with these uh, units and then they can print it. Uh, this is another uh, example. So these two are from fourth year engineering students. There are two propellers uh, for different purposes. One is for a pump and one is for, uh, for aviation purpose. Students come up with different design and they uh, use this in wind tunnel and try to analyze what is the best, most optimum uh, design for the purpose. That's uh, a simple uh, napkin holder. 
Uh, and the reason I actually printed that is because the geometry is a double uh, wall. And honestly, it's impossible to manufacture this with any other uh, mass production rather than 3D printing, unless you actually carve it by hand. So the complexity uh, is amazing. Uh, there are, of course, some limitations for uh, 3D printing, especially in this particular uh, techniques called FDM. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a semi-state uh, material, mostly either is PLA or ABS, pass it through a nozzle and it travels X and Y and Z. So I have uh, printed this Eiffel Tower and of course I couldn't print it in one piece. Uh, that's one of the limitations, mostly because of the bottom piece here. If I would have printed uh, just like this, obviously when it goes line by line, when you get to this point, nothing is supporting it and it won't uh, sustain, so gravity is pushing it down. That's why I had to print it upside down for this particular piece and then the other pieces I printed uh, just in a normal way. Uh, not every part has to be in this uh, trend, so if the part can be done in one piece, you can simply uh, print it. Any modeling and manufacturing starts from computer modeling. So as I mentioned, we use SOLIDWORKS, which is a very powerful uh, drawing software. So as you can see, I have here the bottom piece of the Eiffel Tower. So this has been uh, drawn on SOLIDWORKS. So I go and save this on, in a binary called STL and then import it to the next software, which is a CubeX software. So as you can see, now I bring it to the cube X. I can change the orientation. As I mentioned that we have to print it upside down. There are uh, several parameters can be changed during the printing process, including the speed, the material type, the support type, the color, and so on. And uh, it takes for this particular uh, bottom part two hours and 27 minutes to be completed based on 250 micron resolution. These days, I believe the engineers, they have a very important responsibilities uh, to solve problems in societies. So, I mean, engineering concept for decades was evolved around profit, was one P. But as we are entering a new era, there are two other P's coming to the picture. One is planet and environment, and the other one is society and people. So we teach our students uh, how to consider all these three P's and when you design something you have to satisfy all three in order to have a sustainable design. I intend to believe that I don't teach my students what to think, I teach them how to think and let them uh, take over, let their imagination being their guiding light and I think 3D printing and these printers are uh, one of the tools that they can help the students to realize that the sky is their limit. Thank you very much.